Hey guys, Tony here. Uh, back once again. It's been a while. Um, I don't think I've posted in almost two months, so I took a bit of a break, you know. I kind of felt like I needed a break from doing this and maybe sort of think about, you know, what I'm doing. And if I want to continue, I thought about stopping. And uh, But I figured, what the hell, you know. If I don't feel like doing it, I won't. And if I do, I will, you know, that sort of thing. So, But I'm here, you know. I got some good stuff to show and um, I don't want to keep you too long, so I'm just going to get right into it. I hope you're all well out there, you know. I've uh, been watching. I haven't been watching as much as normal either, so. But I've been watching some, and um, I hope everybody had a good holiday season and all that. It's been a while, so. Anyway, I'll just get right to it. This one I couldn't leave. It was $8. I've never owned this album in any capacity. And while I kind of don't listen to this group as much anymore, I still love them, you know, it's one of those things. I'll go back sometimes and, and listen to them, you know, one of those groups I grew up on, you know. And uh, But yeah, The Stones with uh, uh, England's newest hit maker. Uh, not a first press. First press, first U.S. press had uh, an advertisement here, I think, for a poster. Um, but it is an earlier one, maybe a, a year or two later or something. Uh, it is on the London, it is the full frequency range recording version. But what's cool about this one too, cool it was $8 and it's in really nice shape. But also, it's actually a UK press. It's pressed in, the, in England if you see on top. Um, I just couldn't leave it. It's really it's in really nice shape too. and I figure it's got to be worth more than $8, you know. So I grabbed it. You know, their first album, very, you know, you guys know. They sound really more bluesy, you know. Uh, there are some things here I'm going to show that have been shown a lot, but what can I say? I mean, I picked it up as well, and this is killer. Uh, William Onibor. Who is William Onibor? And this is on the Luca Bop label. I won't talk about it much. Two LPs. Um, fantastic, you know, early electronic funk uh, from Nigeria, I believe. And I'm sure you know the story. He sort of disowned all his music and, you know, sort of... Uh, you know, disowned his past, you know, that sort of thing, and uh, sort of a mystery, this guy, but this is a great compilation, and it's fantastic, so if you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend it, it's, it's excellent, and also I picked up the I'm the Center, Lying the Attic box set, so New Age Music, private issue New Age Music from 1950 to 1990, all I can say is, man, when you get into this thing, it's phenomenal, um, and a great value for 34 bucks. You get four LPs and a nice box, and it's a, a little booklet as well. Great value. It's great music, and I recommend it. Uh, really well done. So happy to get that as well. I know it's all been talked about. Um, and Black Friday, Record Store Day, that whole thing happened. I did pick up a few pieces, but I also I grabbed this as well. Um, all shook down by the replacements. The last replacements album I needed. Um, originals just out of Germany, I believe it was pressed in 1990, and they're rare and expensive, and I never wanted to spend the money on this because it's like my least favorite replacements album. While there is some good stuff on here, though, I mean, it's still, if you're a fan, it's still worth owning. Um, but yeah, first U.S. press, John Cale is featured on here, but you kind of lose that group element. Like, it's almost not like a group effort, more, maybe more like a, uh, Paul Westerberg solo thing, you know, and. Yeah, it's just one of those things, you know, but there, there's some good stuff on here, and I'm glad they repressed it, you know. Uh, and this one is fantastic, too. A really good, like, 2 or $3 buy, and I got to thank Fred for talking about it because I wouldn't have known. Um, but, yeah, that's Sergio Mendez with uh, Brazil 77 Primal Roots. Great Brazilian grooves on here throughout. Um, most of this other guy's work that I've heard is kind of corny to me. You know, he does these you know, Brazilian boss uh, jazz versions of, like, pop songs and things like that. Uh, but this one is not like that at all. It's phenomenal and definitely worth picking up. It's cheap and easy to get. And, yeah, excellent stuff. Primal Roots. Uh, this one is excellent. Um, soul jazz, uh, Afrocentric sort of uh, soul jazz, jazz funk. Um, out of Washington, D.C. Uh, and this is a reissue of uh, Oneness of the Juju with African Rhythms. Have, I've had this one for quite a while now as a bunch of these. So um, a lot of these I've had in my last video. I just didn't couldn't show them yet, but some are newer. But this is excellent. Uh, band uh, sort of <clears throat> led by uh, Plunky Branch, I believe his name was. Great stuff. It's varied. There's some really deep 
groove sort of uh, instrumental tracks or some vocal tracks. It's it's just an awesome album. And uh, I forget what year, early 70s or so. I don't know, but yeah, really nice reissue. Happy to have it. This is an original uh, of uh, Electric Prunes Underground. I only had the reissue prior to this, and i um, happy to get this one. Still in the shrink. It still has the 385 price sticker from Cutler's Record Shop, which was a record store that actually closed recently uh, in, in New Haven, so nearby me. Uh, but yeah, an original on reprise. Um, really happy to get this. Things near mint. Still in the reprise sleeve <clears throat> and on the tricolor reprise label. Excellent. Psychedelic Masterpiece. Their best album. Uh, I mistakenly said once that uh, Mass and F Minor was my favorite, but completely forget forgetting about this. This is, to me, their best album. It's fantastic. So, <clears throat> also picked up Weather Report, Mysterious Traveler for four bucks. Didn't have it. Excellent jazz fusion, you know, Joe Zawinall, Wayne Shorter, just, you know, you guys know this album, or if not, you should. Uh, Silver Apples, the <clears throat> psychedelic electronic, very influential duo. They put out two albums back in the day, Silver Apples and Contact. Uh, so this is a more recent album, I should say, uh, sort of like a reunion thing. Some of this was recorded back in the day. Uh, and some of it was recorded more recently, or at least in the late 90s. Um, so it's sort of a mix. They were reunited, I believe uh, WFMU out of New York, New Jersey, played a Silver Apple song, and, and one of the members working in an office and heard the song, called the radio station, and somehow they got them in contact with the other member, and they, they got together and put this out. So this is The Garden. So it originally came out in 1998. Uh, probably on CD. It's the vinyl version, and uh, is not quite as good as their first album or Contact, but still really cool to have, you know. And it's not bad, so happy to get it. Silver Apples, The Garden. <clears throat> Few reissues from Light in the Attic or their subsidiaries, labels they distribute for that sort of thing. There's been a lot of them, and they're all really good. This is one. This is on the Machu Picchu label. I know it's been talked about, but Merkwood. Original Private Press album out of the UK. Heavy Rock, Heavy Psych. Um, excellent, excellent. A lot of people have complained about the sound quality of this, but all I could say is that while well, like the lack of fidelity is there, the songs and the playing just totally make up for it. Especially the track uh, Love's Glass of Sunshine, 10-minute song, which is phenomenal. Uh, great cover art as well. Merkwood reissue. Uh, all this stuff on Machu Picchu, they, they, they put out some good stuff, so excellent. <clears throat> and this one, too. I was reading about this online, and then, like, the next day I saw it in the store. I knew it was being reissued, but I didn't think it was going to be so soon, uh, and I grabbed it. Lawrence, Lawrence Vinay. So who this really is is uh, Jacqueline Tibble, who was the wife of Laurent Tibble, who was in Magma. And this is a fantastic album. Originals of this are very rare, out of France, obviously. Um, so it's really varied. Some of it does have like a Zool sort of feel to it in a way. Um, but for the most part, it's sort of like avant-garde, French pop, French folk, chanson sort of stuff. And it is fantastic. It really is. Uh, and they're reissuing her second album as well. This is called Galaxies from 1974. Excellent record. That's her there. She was gorgeous, huh? Um, but yeah, fantastic record. I'm glad they reissued it. Highly, highly recommended. And another one which has been shown quite a bit, but uh, I grabbed it as well. Dream, Dream Sequence by Cosmic Eye, or Cosmic Eye Dream Sequence. So this is uh, Amincio de Silva. So Indian, Indian born um, jazz musician. So this is sort of like psychedelic jazz or sort of raga jazz. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's like sitar and tabla and things like that. Um, but yeah, really good. Originals of this are rare. Originally out of the UK on EMI, another one, great cover art. Um, there's the back. I know a lot of guys have bought it and shown it, talked about it, but uh, this one's really good. I wasn't blown away by it at first, but after giving it a few listens, I love it. Um, one of those things, psychedelic rock, early prog, uh, some sort of uh, symphonic prog going on as well, out of Argentina, and this is their first concept album, and it's by Vox Day. 
with La Biblia, the Bible. So it's a concept album about the Bible. It is fantastic. Um, again, it took a couple listens, but I love it. Um, really nice package, really thick cardboard uh, cover there. And it opens up, and the vinyl goes in these sleeves, which are, you know, attached to the cover. And they slide it out like a CD, you know. It's, it's pretty neat. Uh, some CD covers, anyway. Uh, but yeah, really influential album for its time. And um, yeah, they reissued it by Fat Beats. Yeah, Fat Beats. Um, excellent. Worth checking out. Uh, Psychedelic Soul. I know Fred, Big Star, was, just made a video about it. And I mentioned this album. Uh, the Undisputed Truth. Uh, Cosmic Truth. So their third or fourth album. And a real step forward for them. Much more sort of psychedelic. Um, they do a really cool version of Down by the River. You know, sort of a soul version of Down by the River. Uh, but yeah, Norman Whitfield project uh, from 1970, 1976. It's a Canadian press on Motown. So yeah, <clears throat> picked this up for a few dollars and happy to get it. Art Ensemble of Chicago. Nice guys. Didn't have this one. An ECM. Not much to say. I've just never seen it in the wild. And um, that's the kind of thing I'd really order online because it's it's not really rare, you know, but it's just a couple more, there's some reggae influences going on here. It's a cool album. Uh, love Art Ensemble, just a classic. And speaking of Art Ensemble, um, Kami a la Radio by Bridget Fontaine, uh, reissue on um, Superior Viaduct. It's been reissued a few times, but reissues haven't really been in the States much. This is a U.S. reissue. And so it's Bridget Fontaine with the Art Ensemble of Chicago. So again, you have sort of this avant-garde um, jazz, avant-garde pop again, in French pop, you know, that sort of thing, and it's a classic, and glad to finally own it, you know. Uh, but yeah, Superior Viaduct, they also do a great job with their reissues, really nice quality stuff, so yeah, excellent. <clears throat> My last video, I showed an original Soft Machine, well, the censored cover of Soft Machine on... Um, ABC Probe. Shortly after, I found the original of uh, Soft Machine 2 for five bucks. Um, excellent. I mean, there's a little bit of wear on the cover, but vinyl is nice. I mean, there's ring wear there, and it's just nice to have an original. Had a reissue, which I I believe I traded in. Uh, yeah, excellent stuff. Classic. Nice to have an, an original of that. <coughs> also, an original of the Vibrators UK punk band um, pub rock band and this is original UK press Pure Mania um, what was their hit was it Baby Baby either Baby Baby or yeah 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 it might have been Baby Baby um, I believe it was anyway uh, excellent stuff you know UK on Epic near mint I mean some beautiful shape uh, first press let me get it in there some people have actually said that the U.S. press of this sounds better, uh, just for the how they mixed it. I don't know. I'd never heard a U.S. press, but yeah, U.K., excellent. And another album I'm so glad they put out. Um, incredible. Morphine. So this is the first vinyl press of this, their debut album, Good, from 19... What year was this? I don't know. Great band. 1993 originally. It only came out on CD then. Fantastic album. Um... A band I regret not being into back in the day, but I did get to see them live. They were part of a festival, and I remember, I remember watching them, you know, and um, I remember sort of enjoying it. I wasn't familiar with them. I just thinking that it was interesting, and uh, they are, were a very unique band. And I just watched the Mark Sandman story, which is definitely worth watching. It's incredible, and I think I might like this more than Cure for Pain. I mean, this is just excellent. Um, don't go quietly unto your grave. Um, Good is a, uh, another great song. Um, you Speak My Language. The whole album, though, is just incredible. Um, yeah, Morphe. Shout out to my friend Ben Costello. Ben, uh, Ben, I've been watching your videos as much as I can. Um, showing some great stuff. I'm, I'm glad you're making videos. I, I knew you would be interested in this. So I had a U.S. press, excuse me, of this album. <clears throat> Came across the U.K. press. Roy Harper's Life Mask. I'm Life mask. And what's cool about this one is that it came with a press kit. 
So this the UK pressings open up. It looks like this. So it opens up like that, and there's Roy, and the album is in there, which is glued to the the cover, uh, almost like the Vox Day I just showed. But great album. I think this is one that came out immediately after Stormcock. And while it's not as good, it's still a great album. Uh, at first, it's like this is kind of a strange album, especially the the Lord's Prayer, the last song, which takes up the whole second side, I believe. Um, that's excellent. Um, but anyway, yeah, and this came with a press packet, so this is uh, came with it as well. But what was cool, this belonged to a fan who I, I'm guessing lived in the UK. So this opens up, and the press stuff is inside of it, with a picture of Roy in the back there, if you see that. Anyway, so what was in here, though, was really interesting. So what you have are the normal sort of press stuff, a uh, Rolling Stone article here about Roy, um, some photographs of Roy there and here. Whoop. I know he's been in trouble but in, in the UK, but, you know, I won't get into it. Uh, but yeah, Roy Harper, and two pictures of this dude, which I don't know who this is, or he kind of looks familiar, but I have no idea. Uh, maybe he played on the album, or maybe it was the album's owner, or I have no idea. He looks so familiar, though. I, I don't know, but they were in there. I, in a newspaper clipping, which somebody did not, it wasn't part of the press kit, uh, an advertisement for uh, the album Valentine, and this is out of the new music uh, on the New Musical Express, an advertisement there. All right, but also, there were two pairs of tickets for two separate shows in two different months, but sort of near each other, both at in Liverpool's Philharmonic Hall on Hope Street in Liverpool for Roy Harper with Judy... Um, I'm sorry, and this one... No, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. But yeah, two pairs of tickets, and then two advertisements for his tour with Judy Sill... And they're both autographed. They both have autographs. They're, they're <clears throat> I checked them. Ben, you sent me a Roy Harper autograph, and I checked it against these two. If I could get them in the same. So, yeah, two separate autographs. Um, and I checked it against the CD, the more recent one, and they're very much the same. So, yeah, so now I have three Roy Harper autographs, which I thought was really cool. And, of course, the, regular, the envelope for the press. So I thought that was a really cool find for 20 bucks, and I got two of his autographs. So, Anyway, moving on, the rest is jazz. Um, this is more like rock, to be honest, um, but it's incredible. The Tony Williams Lifetime uh, with Turn It Over. This is very much like a jazz fusion, but more on the rock side. Um, so I have Larry Young, of course, Tony Williams. Um, John McLaughlin, and uh, what's his name appears on here? Jack Bruce. This is awesome. I really like this one. One song in particular has like so much energy, it's like punk almost, you know? Um, but an excellent, excellent album. An original on Polydor. There's definitely wear on the cover. I mean, it's a black cover. So, yeah, happy to get that. This one is incredible as well. Love this album. I've played it quite a bit, and some great grooves on here. Again, it's varied. There's some sort of classier jazz vocal type stuff. There's some freer moments, but for the most part... Just fantastic, Afrocentric grooves, just awesome. Phil Coran, uh, Coran and the uh, Artistic Heritage Ensemble with On the Beach. Great album. An album from 1967, this is a reissue. Man, this is good. I highly, highly recommend it. Pete Cozy has, is on here. Great album. I mean, really. He also has the Malcolm X tribute album. Excellent. Highly, highly recommend that. <clears throat> Here's a black jazz compilation. Theo Parrish. Theo Parrish was, is a DJ. I don't know much about him except that he's a DJ and I think he does these compilations. Um, but he did a black jazz compilation, so all excellent stuff from the black jazz label. It's on the Snow Dogs label, which I believe was his label. I like how they recreated the black jazz label, or cover and everything. Um, stuff from this album. I mean, these albums. Fantastic stuff. I wish I had... I wish I had more of these albums, to be honest. Um, I have reissues of some. Fantastic. I highly recommend picking this up. They're not <clears throat> remixes or anything like that. It's it's a compilation from Black Jazz, and it's awesome. <clears throat> I should mention we've been listening to, if you can hear it, Schematics for a Blank Stare. Jeff Greer, the VC Zone Jeff Greer, 
uh, his new album, Kiss of Death. Jeff, fantastic album. And I got to thank David Sequoia Flame for uh, hooking it up. I mean, I ordered it through uh, the Bandcamp page, and I believe he, it was him sending them out. But a great album. I love the cover art. Great music, sort of psychedelic jazz, um, psych, psych rock, psych jazz. It's incredible. And Jeff plays Fender Rhodes for the most part and electric piano, just killer. Uh, I don't know how I compare it to um, Acid Rain. I know Acid Rain much more, but this is just incredible, and I love it. So do check this out. Go to their Bandcamp page, Schematics for a Blank Stare. Excellent stuff. Jeff, you see this. Great, great album. Uh, speaking of black jazz, I, I've had this for a while. I bought it. Excuse me. <coughs> I bought it like at the end of summer, <coughs> and I just never showed it. Forgot to show it. I think I put it in my shelves and <coughs> forgot to show it. But Henry Franklin, the skipper. Excuse me, an original on black jazz. Really happy to own this. Um, double bass player, fantastic soul jazz album. Just incredible stuff. And, um, in really nice shape as well. I mean, again, these covers could have a lot of wear, but this one's not too bad. Just some ring wear, which isn't that bad, really. Um, and I got it for a really great price. Bought it online. and Yeah, an original. Uh, and another original here, which I got for a killer price because there was a split on top. But for this, it's really rare. It sells for a lot of money. The Savage Resurrection, uh, they're debut album um, from 1968, San Francisco Psych, uh, very much blues rock, psych rock, sort of Hendrixy, sort of guitar at times, um, but yeah, excellent album, and an original, which you don't see, everything else about the album is, is just beautiful, besides that split, you know, um, oh, there's the back, you know, just little wear, but other than that, it's and the vinyl is near mint, too. It still has the uh, sleeve and Yon Mercury. Excellent. Really happy to find that. Uh, I showed the reissue of this probably in my last video, but I didn't realize that originals were so cheap. I just never checked. I sort of assumed they were rare. Patrick Vion's um, Brutes E. Temps Analogs. However the hell you say it. Great album. I've talked about it before. It's been talked about. And it's an original on the egg label for like twenty dollars or so you know I think something like that really cheap so happy to get that Bobby Humphrey uh, finally picked up blacks and blues great albums again soul jazz jazz funk killer absolutely killer she's a flautist from Texas uh, probably one of the first significant female artists on Blue Note and this is a great album uh, she does a cover of uh, Harlem River Drive but great album throughout great flute playing Awesome stuff. And this one I got to thank Mike, Bostoni, and Reggie for talking about. Um, I mean, for telling me where I could get it um, for a great price. I got it directly from the label. Uh, Horace Taps got the call. This has been around a lot lately, it seems, because there's been um, new dead stock. You know, the, the owner of the label, I believe, is selling. But this is incredible. It's such a great album. On Nimbus West, um, large ensemble. Again, really varied. They're... Some freer moments, but great piano playing. He's a pianist from Texas. Um, yeah, excellent. Beautiful. It came sealed, I mean, and for a fantastic price. People turned around or sell them for a lot more. So so thank you, Mike, for letting me know about where to get that. <clears throat> Nat Adderley. Um, Cannonball Adderley's brother. This is the uh, Nat Adderley Septet with Don't Look Back. He does a cover of Harold Vick's Don't Look Back. <clears throat> excuse me again fantastic soul jazz um this was a big surprise like I, i'm surprised how good it was to be honest uh, i liked it a lot more than i thought i would it's from 1970 <clears throat> 77 on the inner city got it and it's cheap you know and but it's a fantastic record speaking of harold vick with don't look back a grail of mine i've wanted this for quite a while now and was able to finally get it for a fantastic price don't look back. Harold Vick on Strata, Strata East. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, an original. Beautiful shape. There's nothing wrong with this. And for the price I got it for, I mean, I mean, it's not, not cheap, but nowhere near what it sells for now. Like when people are trying to sell these online for stupid money, $100 and up, and 
thankfully I didn't pay that much. So, um, and yeah, on Strata, he's killer. He's a, uh, from North Carolina, South Carolina. Plays tenor sax and flute. This is the vinyl. It's beautiful. Yeah, long time want now. I mean, well, semi long time. I've wanted it for a while, you know. And glad to finally get it. And finally, another sort of grail of mine, which I'm really happy to finally own. I've posted this online, but Wolfgang Downer's output. A beautiful copy of this um, for, again, a fantastic price. On ECM, this is another one that goes for stupid money now. Uh, it was online for a larger amount than I paid. I wrote the seller asking for details, you know, further details on it. And uh, we started talking via text, and he sold it to me for a much better price than what, even what he had it listed for, which wasn't bad uh, comparatively. So, yeah, fantastic. This is like a free-for-all, three-piece free-for-all. Eberhard Weber, um, Wolfgang Downer, and Fred Braceful. So for the most part, yeah, it's like free-for-all, sort of free jazz, um, chaotic at times. But the one song that's sort of straighter is uh, Nothing to Declare. It's a 10-minute song, which I absolutely love. Uh, do check that out. Uh, but yeah, ECM, I mean, usually ECMs are like a dime a dozen, but this one's not. It's ECM 1006, so it's an early one. And great cover art, you know, but happy to get that one. So there you go, guys. Sorry I rushed. It's still probably pretty long, yeah. So um, leave me comments. My next video uh, will be soon. I have a lots more killer stuff, so stay tuned and leave me comments. Thanks.